हरे 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 राम 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 हरे हरे वी कंटिन्यू रीडिंग फ्रॉम भगवत गीता एज इट इज चैप्टर सेवन टेक्स टू ज्ञानम ते हम सब विज्ञानम ज्ञानम ते हम सब विज्ञानम इदम वक्ष्यामि अशेषत इदम वक्ष्यामि अशेषत यज्ञात्वनेह भूयो न्यज यच ज्ञात्वनेह भूयो न्यज ज्ञातव्यम अविशिष्यते ज्ञातव्यम अविशिष्यते will read yeah translation i shall i shall now declare unto you in full with knowledge both phenomenal and numinous this being known nothing further shall remain for you to know complete knowledge includes knowledge of the phenomenal world the spirit behind it and the source of both of them This is transcendental knowledge. The Lord wants to explain the above mentioned system of knowledge because Krishna, because Arjuna is Krishna's confidential devotee and friend. In the beginning of the fourth chapter, this explanation was given by the Lord, and it is again confirmed here. Complete knowledge can be achieved only by the devotee of the Lord in reciprocal succession directly from the Lord. Therefore, one should be intelligent enough. to know the source of all knowledge who is the cause of all causes and the only object for meditation in all types of yoga practice when the cause of all causes becomes known then everything knowable becomes unknown and nothing remains unknown the vedas mundaka upanishad te kashmin u bhagavo vidnyate sarvam idam vidnyatam bhavati ti so when the cause of all causes becomes known then everything knowable becomes known everything that is to be known nothing remains unknown so knowledge knowledge we always wanting to know things different types of knowledge you know maybe pertaining to politics pertaining to science pertaining to entertainment we are wanting to know but what is the goal of all knowledge that is now krishna is going to explain and who is the source of all knowledge where does knowledge come from and this is what krishna is explaining now what is knowledge what is complete knowledge what's the goal of knowledge who is the person knowledge is coming from सो ईश्वर परम कृष्ण सच्चिदानंद विग्रह अनादिरादिर गोविंद सर्व कारण कारण कॉज ऑफ ऑल कॉजेस इज कृष्ण ब्रह्म जी स्टेट्स इन इज ब्रह्म संहिता सो ही इज द कॉज ऑफ ऑल कॉजेस प्रभुपा दिस सेइंग दैट वी शुड बी इंटेलिजेंट टू नो द सोर्स ऑफ ऑल नॉलेज हु इज द कॉज ऑफ ऑल कॉजेस एंड द ओनली ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ मेडिटेशन फॉर ऑल टाइप्स ऑफ योग so who is the person that we should be meditating on that's krishna who is the mind we need who is the person who on who we should fix our mind on that's krishna krishna says in ninth chapter engage your mind in always thinking of me that is samadhi and by and in thinking of krishna we do all types of activities not that we don't do any activity do all activities but fixing the mind on krishna so here prabhupada is saying complete knowledge includes knowledge of the phenomenal world the spirit behind it and the source of both of them so here in this material world whatever we are seeing is a combination of krishna's energies material energy and we the spirit soul the living entity the marginal energy and both of the material energy and we the living uh, the spirit souls both of us belong to krishna he is the source of both of them and that is knowledge by look by understanding the nature of the material world understanding where the material world is coming from 
we can understand Krishna's position. So Bhagavatam first two, first three cantos, repeatedly the creation is described for us to understand Krishna's position. So uh, again, uh, Shla Prabhupada is of course giving, stressing the importance that knowledge, if we really want the truth, then we should hear in the disciplic succession. Because when we are hearing in the disciplic succession, the original speaker is Krishna himself. All knowledge comes from Krishna. If we really want to know, we have to hear from Krishna. So when we are hearing in disciplic succession, we are hearing from Krishna. Because the devotee hears and he speaks. Whatever he hears, he speaks. There's no personal motivation. And, and Prabhupada is, is pointing out that um, when the cause of call causes becomes known, then everything knowable becomes known and nothing remains known, unknown. When we come to understand Krishna, means we've come to the end of knowledge. There's nothing more to know. Manushyanam Sahasreshu Aschid Yatati Siddhaye Aschid Yatati Siddhaye Yatatam Api Siddhanam Yatatam Api Siddhanam Kaschin Mam Veti Tatvataha Translation. Out of many thousands among men, one may endeavor for perfection. And of those who have achieved perfection, hardly one knows me in truth. There are various grades of men. And out of many thousands, one may, one may be sufficiently interested in transcendental realization to try to know what is the self, what is the body, and what is the absolute truth. Generally, mankind is simply engaged in the animal propensities, namely eating, sleeping, defending, and mating. And hardly anyone is interested in transcendental knowledge. of the Gita are meant for those who are interested in transcendental knowledge, in understanding the self, the super self, and the process of realization by Kyan Yoga, Dhyan Yoga, and the discrimination of the self from matter. However, Krishna can be known only by persons who are in Krishna consciousness. Other transcendentalists may achieve impersonal Brahman realization, for this is easier than understanding Krishna. Krishna is the supreme person, but at the same time, he is beyond the knowledge of Brahman and Paramatma. The yogis and jnanis are confused in their attempts to understand Krishna. Although the greatest of the impersonalists, Sri Pada Shankaracharya has admitted in his Gita commentary, that Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. His followers do not accept Krishna as such, for it is very difficult to know Krishna, even though one has transcendental realization of impersonal Brahman. Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead, the cause of all causes, the primeval Lord Govinda. Ishwara Parama Krishna Satchit Anand Vigraha Anadir Adir Govinda Sarva Karana Karanam it is very difficult for the non-devotees to know him. All the non-devotees declare that the path of bhakti or devotional service is very easy. We cannot practice it. If the path of bhakti is so easy as the non-devotee class of men proclaim, then why do they take up the difficult path? Actually, the path of bhakti is not easy. The so-called path of bhakti practiced by unauthorized persons without knowledge of bhakti may be easy. But when it is practiced Actually, according to the rules and regulations, the speculative scholars and philosophers fall away from the path. Srila Rupa Goswami writes in his Bhakti Rasamrat Sindhu, Shruti Smriti Puranadi, Pan Karata Vidhim Vina, Aikantiki Hare Bhakti, Upat Tiava Kalpate. Devotional service of the Lord that ignores the authorized Vedic literature like the Upanishads, Puranas, and Narat Pancharaka 
it simply is simply an unnecessary disturbance in society it is not possible for the brahman realized impersonalist or the parmatma realized yogi to understand krishna and the supreme personality of godhead as the son of mother yashoda or the charioteer of arjuna even the great demigods are sometimes confused about krishna moyanti yat suraya mam tu veda na kashchana no one knows me as i am the lord says and if one does know him then sha mahatma su durlabha such a great soul is very rare therefore unless one practices devotional service to the lord one cannot know krishna as he is sat vata even though one is a great scholar or philosopher only the pure devotees can know something of the inconceivable transcendental qualities in krishna his being the core of all causes his omnipotence and opulence and his wealth fame strength beauty knowledge and renunciation because krishna is benevolently inclined to his devotees he is the last word in brahman realization and the devotees alone can realize himself realize him as he is therefore it is said atar shri krishna namadi na bhave trayam indriya sevon mukhe hi jivadu swayam eva surati adha no one can understand krishna as he is the blunt as he by the blunt material senses but he reveals himself to the devotees being pleased with them for their transcendental loving service unto him bhakti rasamrita sindhu krishna singh manushya nam sahasrishu then out of many 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 thousands of men kashchid yatati siddhaye someone uh will end up for perfection and yatatam api siddhanam kashchin mam veti tat atah but out of so many who have achieved perfection hardly one knows me in truth so even coming to the liberated platform understanding the brahman the brahma jyoti or understanding the parmatma how many people can <clears throat> no most of us are in just engaged in eating sleeping mating defending hardly anyone wants to understand what is matter what is spirit you know oh what what's the difference what's who am i what's the difference between me and the matter so hardly anyone is making this inquiry and out of thousands of such men who are making the inquiry hardly one will be actually able to understand oh i'm spirit i'm not matter actually be on that platform and even if one is on that platform understanding that i am spirit i'm not matter it's still very difficult to understand krishna it's not easy to understand krishna he reserves the right to be known it's only when we hear from the pure devotee that we will be able to understand something of krishna to understand krishna's position in tattva tattva taha not saying oh yeah yeah i know krishna he was some some personality 5000 years ago he was with the uh cowherd men or with the with the gopis and you know but that's not understanding krishna in truth you need to understand krishna's position as the supreme personality of god as the cause of all causes all the great authorities are saying krishna is the supreme personality of god lord brahma lord shiva they are all all declaring it lord brahma here propa this quoting um that uh, lord brahma in his um in his brahma samhita it says ishwara parama krishna the supreme lord is lord shri krishna sachidananda vigraha his form is transcendental sachidananda anadi radir govinda sarva karana karanam is the original personality of godhead he is the cause of all causes so only when we and when we um 
try to understand Krishna by hearing from the pure devotee, will we be able to understand that Krishna is the Supreme Lord? He's a person. God is a person and he's the Supreme Person. Shankaracharya, he is the leader of the Maya, the impersonalist philosophy. He's the one who who, who, pro, who propounded, he's the one who taught this impersonalist philosophy. Even he said Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead and that one should worship Narayan. He said that Lord Narayan exists before the creation. Krishna is the supreme Lord, but his followers don't are not able to understand. I'm sorry. His followers don't accept it. They, this was his final teaching, but they don't accept it. They, they have gotten um, confused in the word jugglery. So it's by the devotees that Krishna can be known, by devotion that Krishna can be known. Krishna says, Bhaktiya Mam Abhijanati, that I can be known only by devotion. So hearing from the pure devotees, hearing in the disciplic succession, then we will be able to understand the Krishna in truth, understanding the real position of Krishna. Many people say that, oh, I bhakti is very easy. I don't want to just do bhakti. I'm going to take up difficult processes of meditation. I'm going to take up difficult processes of different Asana, I'm going to take up different process, different austerities, penances, difficult, difficult things. But no, uh, because by doing all that, Krishna can't be known. He's like, he says, I can be known only by devotion. And the path of bhakti is not easy. That's the reason people are not taking up that path. It's not very easy. If, of course, Prabhupada would say it's, it's easy for the simple. But it's very difficult for, for those who are not simple. And so following in the footsteps of the great devotees, then we can take up devotional service. And Srila Rupa Goswami is saying that devotional service, we, we need to hear from the scriptures, the authorized scriptures, follow the instructions which are in the scriptures, the Puranas, Upanishads, Narada, Panchalatra. Otherwise, we are just going to create a disturbance in society. You know, we may think we are very religious, we are very, we are doing bhakti, but if we are not following the rules and regulations of bhakti, then we are being a disturbance. Because there are certain rules and regulations that need to be followed. So we need to follow them. So someone may be in the path of knowledge, gyan path, and they may have understood Brahman. But to understand Krishna is not so easy. But a devotee tells us the position of Krishna, that Krishna is God. The Brahman is the effulgence which is coming from his body. And Paramatma is the feature by which he is pervading all the atoms of the universe and he is uh, even in the heart of every living entity. Sat Chit Ananda. The Sat feature is by the Brahman feature. Chit feature is with the Paramatma feature and uh, Ananda, bliss, is understanding the Supreme Lord as a person. And Krishna is saying that no one knows me as I am in truth, understanding Krishna's position. And if one knows me, then that person is a Mahatma. He's a great soul. And such a great soul is very rare. So by devotional service, we will be able to understand Krishna to whatever degree that Krishna reveals himself to us. We can understand how Krishna is the cause of all causes. He is omnipotent. You know, we say God is omnipotent. How he is omnipotent? He's pervading this entire universe in his Paramatma feature. In Krishna, he is uh, the owner of all opulence. Wealth, fame, strength, beauty, knowledge, and renunciation. 
we are all attracted to such opulences and each of us may have some opulence or the other to a greater or a lesser degree. But Krishna has all these opulences in full. So it's by a devotee that we can understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna as he is in truth. Krishna reveals himself to the devotee being pleased with their devotional service, transcendental loving service. So we cannot demand Krishna. Krishna, now you must show me where is God. And Prabhupada would say, why God is our servant that he will come in front of us? No. We have to work in such a way that God is pleased to reveal himself to us. So this is what is mentioned by Srila Rupa Goswami in Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu. Srila Rupa Goswami is the leader of the six Goswamis of Vrindavan. And he's wrote, written this wonderful book, Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu, which La Prabhupada translated as Nectar of Devotion. So when we engage our senses in the service of master of the senses, then Krishna reveals. And service to Krishna begins by the tongue, chanting Hare Krishna, having Krishna Prashad. Krishna reveals himself. Sevan Mukhehi Jivada. The tongue. Is that okay? Yes, yes. Bhumir Apo Nalo Vayu. Bhumir Apo Nalo Vayu. Kham Mano Buddhir Evacha. Kham Mano Buddhir Evacha. Ahankara Itiyamme. Ahankaram Itiyamme. Binna Prakritir Ashtadha. Binna Prakritir Ashtadha. Translation. Earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, and false ego. Altogether, these eight constitute my separated material energies. The science of God analyzes the constitutional position of God and its diverse energies. Material energy is called Prakriti or the energy of the Lord in his different Purusha incarnations, expansions, as described in the Narata Pancharatra. One of the Sattvata Tantras. Vishnos to Trini Rupani, Purushakyani Atho Vidu, Ekam to Mahatha Shaktir, Divyatam Trev Anda Shamshitam, Trithyam Sarva Bhuta Stam, Tani Nyatva Vimu Chate. For material creation, Lord Krishna famous expansion assumes three Vishnus. The first one, Mahavishnu, creates to create the total material energy known as the Mahatattva. The second, Garbodha, Garbodha ka Sai Vishnu, enters into all the universes to create diversities in each of them. The third, Shiro Daka Sai Vishnu is diffused as the all pervading super soul in all the universes and is known as Paramatma. He is present even within the atoms. Anyone who knows these three Vishnus can be liberated from material entanglement. This material world is a temporary manifestation of one of the energies of the Lord. All the activities of the material world are directed by these three Vishnu expansions of Lord Krishna. These Purushas are called incarnations. Generally, one who does not know the science of God, Krishna, assumes that this material world is for the enjoyment of the living entities and that the living entities are the Purushas, the causes, controllers and enjoyers of the material energy. According to Bhagavad Gita, the, the, the atheistic conclusion is false. In the words under discussion, it is stated that Krishna is the original cause of the material manifestation. Srimad Bhagavatam also confirms this. The ingredients of the material manifestation are separated energies of the Lord. Even the Brahma Jyoti, which is the ultimate goal of the impersonalist, is the spiritual energy manifested in the spiritual sky. 
there are no spiritual diversities in the brahma jyoti as there are in the vaikuntha lokas and the impersonalist accept his brahma jyoti as the ultimate eternal goal the parmatma manifestation is also a temporary all pervasive aspect of the shri rotsaka sai vishnu the parmatma manifestation is not eternal in the spiritual world therefore the factual absolute truth is the supreme personality of god had krishna he is a complete energetic person and he possesses different separated and internal energies in the material energy the principal manifestations are eight as above mentioned out of these the first five manifestations namely earth water fire air and sky are called the five gigantic creations or the gross creations within which the five sense objects are included they are the manifestations of physical sound touch form taste and smell material science comprises these 10 items and nothing more but the other three items namely mind intelligence and soul ego are neglected by the materialists philosophers who deal with mental activities are also not perfect in knowledge because they do not know the ultimate source krishna the false ego i am and it is mind which constitute the basic principle of material existence includes 10 sense organs for material activities intelligence refers to the total material creation called the mahat tatva therefore from the eight separated energies of the lord are manif- are uh, manifest the 24 elements of the material world which are the subject matter of the sankhya atheistic philosophy they are originally offshoots from krishna's energies and are separated from him but atheistic sankhya philosophers with the poor fund of knowledge do not know krishna as the cause of all causes the subject matter for discussion in the sankhya philosophy is only the manifestation of the external energy of krishna as it is described in the bhagavad gita here krishna first he said that to understand knowledge to understand that where this cosmic manifestation is coming from that is a combination of the spirit soul and uh, of the external energy and who is the cause behind it so krishna is the cause behind it and he says that very difficult for persons to understand krishna now he is saying clearly earth water fire air ether mind intelligence and false ego these eight elements they are my separated material energy you know have you have you, have we ever considered who created the sun who created the sky who is created the why why does air exist why does earth exist or water exist so krishna i think they constitute his material energy this is his material energy we may think it belongs to us because we have this desire or the propensity to rule over the material world but it because we may have this propensity but it does not actually belongs to us it belongs to krishna so material nature is called prakriti and krishna is called the purusha and and here shla prabhupad is describing from the narada pancharatra the three purushas so who are the the three purushas the actually there's one but they have expanded into three so who are they the purusha avatars mahavishnu that yeah ha ha and uh, shirodaksha vishnu that's right and what does mahavishnu do kya karte hai mahavishnu um, he <coughs> creates the total total material energy मटीरियल एनर्जी महा तत्व को उत्पन्न करते हैं और दूसरा ब्रह्मांड में प्रविष्ट होकर उनमें विविधता उत्पन्न करते हैं गर्भोदय विष्णु और शिरोदक्ष विष्णु समस्त ब्रह्मांडों में हम सबके अंदर है परमात्मा थैंक यू या सो महाविष्णु ही लाइज डाउन ऑन द कॉजल ओशन 
He is also called Karana Dakshai Vishnu. He sleeps on the Karana ocean and from his breathing comes all this hmm. material worlds. He is the one who is creating the Mahatattva. Garbha Takshai, as you said, he is entering into every universe. And Shiro Dakshai Vishnu, he is entering into every atom of the universe. It is the, He is the Paramatma, Shiro Dakshai Vishnu. The Paramatma in everyone's heart is a four-handed Vishnu form. He is the Shiro Dakshai Vishnu. And Prabhupada is saying, anyone who knows these three Vishnus can be liberated from material entanglement. So we just have to try to understand how Krishna is creating this material world. Bhagavatam, the first three cantos specifically, speaks a lot in detail about the creation of the material universes. So the material energy of Krishna is eternal. Krishna's material energy, she is eternal, but the manifestation of the material world is temporary. Sometimes it's manifest, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it can be seen, sometimes it's not seen. But the material energy, she is eternal. Why? Because she belongs to Krishna. She's Krishna's energy. She's real. She belongs to the absolute truth. But her mani the manifestation that sometimes the universes are there, that is temporary. So all the, all the Prabhupada is explaining that all the activities in this material world are being done under the supervision of these three Vishnu expansions. So we may think the material world, there is no creator, there is, it's just come by itself, but no. By understanding Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, we can understand that Krishna, he's the creator of this material universes, of the material worlds. So, so if Krishna is the creator, so he is the proprietor, it belongs to him. He is the controller. So you should be engaged in his service. But we are not able to understand that. We are thinking we are the controllers. We are the enjoyers of this material energy. If Krishna is the creator, then it should be used in his service because it rightfully belongs to him. And engaging this, everything in the service of Krishna, that is true renunciation. That is real renunciation. Because then one understands one's position and Krishna's position and the position of the material energy. So the pure devotee, that's why he uses everything in service of Krishna. He does not say, oh, it's false or renounces it. No, he understands it doesn't belong to me. It belongs to Krishna. Let me use it in Krishna's service. So the material energy is Krishna's separated energy. She's Krishna's separated energy. The internal energy is, the spiritual energy is Krishna's internal energy. The material energy is called Bahiranga Shakti. The spiritual ent energy is called Antaranga Shakti. So here Prabhupada is explaining that um, the goal of the, of the Gyanis is to reach the Brahma Jyoti. So this Brahma Jyoti, who does this Brahma Jyoti belongs to? It belongs to Krishna. It's Krishna's energy, spiritual energy of Krishna. It's the spiritual sky. Of course, in the spiritual sky, there is no variety. There's no variety in the, in the Brahma Jyoti. All the variety is there in the planets which are floating in the Brahma Jyoti, the Vaikuntha planets. All variety is there. Just as we are seeing here, the, the sky is there, the material sky is there. But there are many planets floating in the material sky. You know? And inside the planets, there is so much variety, so many different forms, so much activity. Similarly, the Brahma Jyoti is the spiritual sky. And in the spiritual sky are floating all the Vaikuntha planets and all the Vaikuntha planets have so much variety. Coming to Paramatma manifestation, Shirodakshai Vishnu, 
as you rightfully said, he is the Paramatma in our heart. But in the spiritual world, there is no Paramatma feature. Why? Why in the spiritual world there is no Paramatma feature? Only here in the material world. Why there is no Paramatma? Anyone? Well, because in the spiritual world, Krishna or his expansions are personally present. They are personally there. So there is no need of Paramatma. Here, Krishna is coming in our heart as Paramatma because he's personally not here. So he's with us in his form as Paramatma. But in the spiritual world, he's there himself. All his expansions, the various Vishnu expansions are there himself in every planet of the spiritual world. So the devotees can personally see Krishna or Lord Vishnu. So there's no need of Paramatma. So that's why the Paramatma feature is not there in the spiritual world. Krishna, he is the absolute truth. He is the supreme personality of Godhead. And uh, the Brahma Jyoti, the Brahman, is the effulgence which is coming from his body. And Paramatma is by the feature by which he is pervading the material world. And he... So when we say God, we say God is omnipotent. So he has this many, many potencies, many different energies, the spiritual energy, the material energy, and we, the marginal energy. So then here Prabhupada is explaining the five elements. What are the, the five gross elements? The five gross Earth, material. Water, fire, air, and sky. Yeah. The Panchamabha. These are the five gross elements by which this material world is created. And then uh, the sense objects are, are included in this. So what are the sense objects? Does anyone know? What are the sense objects that are included in these? Yeah. Touch, form, sound, taste, and smell. Form, yes. taste, and smell. Yes, that's right here. It's mentioned. Okay, then Prabhupada is explaining that material science goes only till here. But there is other, the subtle elements. What are the mind, subtle elements? Mind, intelligence, and false ego. Yeah. Mind, intelligence, and false ego also exist. These are the subtle elements which... Uh, modern science does not deal with the false ego the false ego is thinking I am the body hmm. that is the false ego true ego is understanding I am spirit soul part and parcel of Krishna I am eternal servant of Krishna you know so when we are saying false ego means there has to be a true ego also so the true ego the real Real understanding is, I am eternal servant of Krishna, part and parcel of Krishna. So, okay, then the ten sense organs. The ten sense organs, they are divided into five knowledge acquiring organs, sense organs, and five um, working senses. So, which are they? The five knowledge acquiring senses. by which we can understand the eyes and the nose yes 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 eyes ears nose tongue uh, tongue, tongue. Huh. and skin and gen general skin no that comes in working that will come so that is five are knowledge acquiring then five working senses which are the working senses As you said, genitals is one of them. Then Ear. hands. Hmm? Ears. Oh no, that ears comes in knowledge acquiring. Okay. So working senses are hands, legs, legs. 
feet and the mouth. mouth. Yeah, hands, legs, mouth, the anus and genitals. genitals. Those are the working senses. So then 10 working senses, 10, and then we counted five gross elements. Earth, water, air, fire. That becomes 15, then five objects. That becomes 20. Then the three subtle elements, mind, intelligence, false ego. That becomes 23. And the 24th is the Mahatattva. The total, the total ingredient, the total material ingredients. So the Sankhya philosophy deals with this 24 material elements. This is all that the material world is made up of. You know, this material world that we are so attracted to, we are so dazzled by. It's If we break it down into elements, these are the elements. There is the true Sankhya philosophy. The propounder is the is Lord Kapiladev, who speaks about the Sankhya philosophy in third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Then it seems later on they became a atheistic uh, atheistic Kapila. That is a diversion from the real Sankhya philosophy. The real Sankhya is spoken by Lord Kapiladev in, in third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. So, anyway, these are the 24 elements and Krishna is saying that this belongs to Krishna. We are thinking it belongs to us, but this all belongs to Krishna. It's a manifestation of Krishna's external energy. So the atheistic Sankhya philosophy, they are not able to understand who does it belong to. So the elements are there, yes, but who's the creator? That's Krishna. And Krishna is clearly saying that here in Bhagavad Gita. So we go on to read. Aparayam itastva anyam. Aparayam itastva anyam. Prakritam vidhi me param. Prakritam vidhi me param. Jeeva bhutam mahabaho. Jeeva bhutam mahabaho. Yayedam dhara yate jagat. Yayedam dhara yate jagat. Translation. Beside these, O oh mighty arm Narjana, there is another superior energy of mind which comprises the living entities who are exploiting the resources of this material inferior nature. Here it is clearly mentioned that living entities belong to the superior na nature for energy of the Supreme Lord. The inferior energy is matter manifested in different elements, namely earth, water, fire, air, Ether, mind, intelligence, and false ego. Both forms of material nature, namely gross, earth, etc., and subtle mind, etc., are products of the inferior energy. The living entities who are exploiting these inferior energies for different purposes are the superior energy of the Supreme Lord. And it is due to this energy that the entire material world functions. functions. The cosmic Stations has no power to act unless it is moved by the superior energy, the living entity. Energies are always controlled by the energetic. And therefore, the living entities are always controlled by the Lord. They have no independent existence. They are never equally powerful as unintelligent men think. The distinction between the living entities and the, and the Lord is described in Srimad Bhagavatam as follows. Aparimata Dhruva Stanu Brato Yadi Sarvagatas Starahi Na Shashyateti Nayamo Dhruva Netharatha Ajani Chayan Mayam Tat Avi Mucha Nayantir Bhave Samam Anujanatam Yat Amatma Mata Dustaya O Supreme Eternal 
if the embodied living entities were internal and all pervading like you, then they would be under your control. But if the living entities are accepted as minute energies of your lordship, then they are at once subject to your to your supreme control. Therefore, real liberation entails surrender by the living entities to your control. And that surrender will make them happy. In that constitutional position only can they be controllers. Therefore, men with limited knowledge who advocate the monistic theory that God and the living entities are equal in all respects are actually guided by a faulty and polluted opinion. The Supreme Lord Krishna is the only controller and all living entities are controlled by him. These living entities are his superior energy because the quality of their existence is one and the same with the Supreme. But they are never equal to the Lord in quantity of power. While exploiting the gross and subtle inferior energy matter, the superior energy, the living entity, forgets his real spiritual mind and intelligence. This forgetfulness is due to the influence of matter upon the living entity. But when the living entity becomes free from the influence of the illusory material energy, he attains the stage called mukti or liberation. The false ego under the influence of material illusion thinks, I am matter and material acquisitions are mine. His actual position is realized when he is liberated from all material ideas, including the conception of his becoming one in all respects with God. Therefore, one may conclude that the Gita confirms the living entity to be the only one of the multi energies of Krishna. And when this one, energy. To be only one, not the only. To be only to be, one. To be only one of the mm. multi energies of Krishna. And when this energy is freed from material contamination, it becomes fully Krishna conscious or liberated. So now. In the earlier verse, Krishna is saying the material world belongs to him. The material energy belongs to him. She is his separated energy. Now he's saying, what about us, the living entities? We are there too. He's saying they are the superior energy of mind. So we also belong to Krishna. And what are we doing? We are exploiting the resources of this material nature. So the material nature is called inferior energy of Krishna. The living entities, we, are called the superior energy. Why? Why is material energy inferior and we are superior? We are part and parcel of Krishna. Yes, that's right. We are part and parcel and material energy no. is his separated energy. And because we are no. part and parcel, we are conscious. That's the conscious. difference. Huh. Yes, we are conscious. Yes. But the material energy is not conscious. Earth, water, air, fire, there's no consciousness in these elements. But the living entity is conscious. We understand I exist. I am an individual personality. We have that consciousness. So, what... Um, Anyway, Krishna is saying that the living entity belongs to him. The inferior energy belongs to him. So everything is belongs to Krishna. Now what are we doing here in the material world is we are trying to exploit. We are thinking that we are the owners and creators of earth, mm. water, air, fire. So we can create something in the factory. Because we get the raw material. So we can create a laptop or mobile phone. But where do the elements come from? We are thinking we are creating. I can create. Yeah, we are secondary creator. But where do the elements come from? The raw material for our factory. Where does that come from? It's Krishna's. He's saying it's his energy. So the material energy, she is also inferior because, for example, we, there is a car. Car cannot drive by itself. The soul is needed. The living entity is needed to drive the car. We may say, okay, but I made an auto car. So the car can work automatically. Yeah, but there is somebody who's made this auto car. There's somebody who's pushed the button of autopilot. Hmm. 
So the living entity is the superior energy because we are conscious. And the material energy, she cannot work without us. Cannot. As we said, the car cannot drive by itself. The laptop can be just sitting there. Only when we sit on it, work on it, can it work. So the living entity is needed. Of course, the supreme living entity is Krishna. We are the tiny, tiny movers here. So we are also controlled by Krishna. We are, we are controlled. We have no independent existence, as Prabhupada is saying. We exist because Krishna exists. So we are not, we can never become as powerful as Krishna. Even after liberation, we continue to remain minute living entities. We can never become all pervading. Our size can never increase to the size of all pervasive, omnipresent. We can never become that. No, we are always minute. Always minute. And because we are minute, we are under the control of Krishna. So what does liberation mean? This is Bhagavatam is explaining. Bhagavatam is saying real liberation means surrender of the living entity. And in that surrender, we can be happy. That's why Krishna in 1866 also, he says, Sarva dharma, dharma parityanya, mame kam sharanam raja. Just abandon everything and surrender unto me. And that is real liberation. If we follow Krishna's instruction, that surrendering everything and uh, coming under the, I'm sorry, abandoning everything and surrendering unto Krishna. That is our real position. And in only in that position can we become the controller because on the absolute platform, there is no difference between the controller and the control. So we cannot think that God and the living entities are same or that after liberation that the living entity will become God. No, that is. Bhagavatam is saying that is a misinformation, a faulty idea. That God will always remain God, living entities always remain living entities. We are same in quality, because Krishna is Sachidananda, we are part and parcel of Krishna, so we are Sachidananda. But we are part and parcel, minute parts of Krishna. But Krishna is the complete whole, He's the Supreme Lord. We are tiny living entities. We are Anu, He is Vibhu. So we can never be equal. Our, our capacity. Our size is always minute. Even after liberation, we continue to be minute because we are spiritual. Spiritual means eternal, never changes. So now what's happened is because we are under this influence of material nature. Now, although we said that we are superior and material nature, she's inferior, how come we are under the influence? influence. Why? Because we are minute. Because our size is very small. So we have the tendency to come under her influence. But Krishna, never. He never comes under the influence of Maya. He never forgets his position. But we forget. We, have, we forget because our, we are very minute. So we have this tendency. And when, when we come under illusion, we start thinking, I'm the body. Everything related to the body is mine. We completely forget our relationship with Krishna. And Prabhupada is saying we can real constitutional position, real liberation means understand, giving up all material desires, giving up also the desire to become one with God. But to understand, I am a spirit soul, part and parcel of Krishna. I am eternal servant of Krishna. So the living entity, we, we are only one of the many energies of Krishna. Krishna is the supreme energetic. 
and we are one of his energies. Right now we are under the influence of material nature when we can come out of this influence then we get liberated or Krishna conscious and we can come to this position by hearing and chanting by engaging in devotional service constant hearing and chanting is that okay? Yes Anyone wanted to add anything or any question? No. Then we'll stop here for today. Shla Prabhupada ki jai, Bhagavad Gita ki jai. Thank you so much for listening and joining in. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.